Facebook message that we got from Dan who asked, is there a point as a Christian where I should no longer struggle with sin? No. I wish there were, Dan. Uh, You know, the war never ends until we do, until uh, this body of sin, as Paul calls it, which is not just our physical body, but this whole person that we are uh, under the curse, under, under Adam, is finally laid in the ground so that we can be raised as new creatures, as completely new in body and soul. And although we're regenerated, uh, we, we are given faith to, to trust in Jesus Christ and receive all of his benefits, uh, we aren't yet completely uh, renovated. And Paul talks about this in Romans 7, the good that I want to do, I don't do, the the, the evil that I don't want to do, I keep on doing, O wretched man that I am, not just that I was, but that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And then he looks away from himself up to Christ, who has already gained victory over sin and death, and says, oh, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So when we look at ourselves, we see sin and misery. Yes, also the fruit of the Spirit, but a lot of contradiction of what we want to see in our lives. But when we look outside of ourselves to Jesus Christ, we see perfection. We see someone who lived in our place, died in our place, rose again in our place, and ascended to the Father with us in his train. We are now seated with him in heavenly places. We are guaranteed, we are assured final glorification, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. But for now, it's a war. Mm-hmm. And like you were just talking about, we opened up the program thinking about the prosperity gospel. And I know one of the things that's sometimes taught there is the idea of just the victorious Christian life. You know, if you're really walking with Jesus, you're going to have everything you want and you're going to be able to conquer all of those sinful habits that, you know, mm-hmm. you've wrestled with. Are you living in victory? Are you yeah. living in victory? But you think about what John says in 1 John chapter 1, if we say we have no sin, We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. In other words, look, we can never say as Christians, as followers of Jesus, who have been regenerated, as you said, Mike, but not renovated fully yet. You know, we're waiting for that future glorification. We're always going to battle with sin. We can never say, I have now achieved a a place where I live above all known sin. We we never do in this life. And it's interesting, you know, here are two good terms for us to bear in mind. Antinomianism means against law. God likes to forgive. I like to sin. This is going to be a perfect relationship. So the antinomian doesn't struggle with sin because he says, who cares? You know, I'm always going to be a miserable sinner uh, until Christ comes. And, you know, I'm forgiven. So, uh, you know, not... That's a big deal. Not perfect, just forgiven. And, And then the legalist, on the other hand, or the perfectionist says, uh, I can live above all known sin. Well... What John was saying from the passage you read, what Paul's saying from Romans 7, what it, it, the whole testimony of Scripture is saying, is that both of those are ways of denying the truth. We fight against sin, and antinomianism tries to keep us from fighting against sin by saying it's not important. Perfectionism keeps us from struggling with sin by saying, oh, I'm not struggling anymore. We just deny the struggle. But The struggle is exactly where we are right now. We're in a state right now where the church is persecuted from enemies without and enemies within, and we as individual believers are persecuted by enemies without and enemies within. Our own flesh craves that which it has always craved even before we were converted. Even though the power and bondage of sin is broken, the presence of sin remains in us until that glorious day. You know, I know as a pastor that when we're confronted with our sins, we want to hide. And I think two of the the primary strategies that that we use to hide or to get away from our sin is we deflect. You know, we say, well, it's this other person's fault. I did this because you did that. Or we deny, I I just didn't do it. Uh, Another one that we use is we downplay right, the, the, the severity of our sin. Mm-hmm. And, and what we have to do is we really have to minimize God's law. Right. We have to say, look, God, God really, you know, I know Jesus talked about how we have to love God perfectly and love our neighbor as ourselves. But, you know, if you try hard, you yeah. know, that, that, that's good enough. The problem, though, with that, Mike, wouldn't you say, is it really robs us of the glory of the gospel. It really does. And, you, you know, you see this in some uh, 
uh, Christians in the past who have defended perfectionism. John Wesley, for example, he said uh, that, okay, we can live above all known sin. And then, you know, his critics said, seriously, look at all these passages. And he said, well, we, okay, we, we still make mistakes. Ah, oh, now you're not calling them sins. They're mistakes. <laughs> yeah. And then he said, but we can have perfect love. And we'll still make mistakes, but we can be perfect in love. And here's the thing. The, what does the law command? The yeah. law commands love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Perfect love is the fulfillment of the law. So what he was actually saying was we can perfectly fulfill the law. Mm-hmm. No, not in this life. We certainly can't. We all fall short of the glory of God. We always need Jesus Christ and his forgiveness. That's why we are always confessing our sins. The church that, conf- that, that fails to confess its sins, either because of antinomianism or perfectionism, is a church that has forgotten Christ. Mm-hmm. Really helpful stuff. Yeah, and if you, if you wonder, you know, is it possible to have perfect love? Do I have perfect? Just ask your wife. Mm-hmm. I think she'll <laughs> let you know. Exactly. You know? Yeah, no. Not, <laughs> not so much. You don't have it. 